We're going to just see in the book of Acts here in the New Testament, chapter 10, there is a, a, a man named Cornelius, and he was looking for God, and he loved God, he searched for God with all his heart, with all his mind. Cornelius, he was Italian, the Italian regiment, okay? He was a devout man, chapter 10, verse 2 of Acts, a devout man and one who feared God, wow, with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. The ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision, an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. Now watch, watch this devout man of God. Look, look at his lifestyle. Look, look at his lifestyle, okay? He loved God, feared God. Not only loved God and have, has heard about God, he was fearful, reverent. He walked, he lived a holy life. Okay, he feared God with his entire house who gave offerings generously to the people and prayed to God always. So what we're doing, what we're doing is reading here this lifestyle of this man who was looking for the Lord and about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly, he didn't make a mistake, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God. Notice, and I cannot read the whole text because I have two other texts I want to show you, but it is in this text that God sends an angel to appear to Cornelius of the Italian regiment. God sends an angel to give him instruction, saying your prayers and your alms or your giving have come up for a memorial before God. So this angel was telling him, you know, encouraging Cornelius, he's this is what the Lord is saying. This is what the Lord is talking to you about. And then the angel sends him to meet uh, Peter. Uh, Peter is sent to meet Cornelius. Peter preaches at Cornelius' home, etc. Peter, chapter 10, also had a vision. And so God always works with supernatural activity to lead his people. That you may know that you know that you know that you're making the right decision. It is in, the, in, in this same chapter that we see how Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. So God's desire is to give you the same anointing that Jesus had, the same presence that you may go forward in life. There are angels assigned, very real angels. They're very real. They're around you constantly. They go in your car with you. They go to the gas station with you. They go to the supermarket with you. And if you, when you have a consciousness of this, not that we're looking for angels. They are there. We look for Jesus. We, our focus is Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who has given us angels, who go with me wherever I go, who has given us the ability to have faith that they are walking with me in whatever nation I go to, whatever country God sends to me. If God tells me to go to a country, that's where I go because he has given me angels. Now let's go to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 5, this is a general of God. I mean, Joshua was serving the Lord, I mean, without, without any agenda. He was just serving the Lord, being a, a, a blessing to Moses, okay? Being a blessing, being a blessing to Moses, okay? Now, Moses, God used greatly. But he, there was somebody raised up by him named Joshua. And Joshua was chosen by God to take them to the next level. God did not allow Moses to go to the next level. God chose Joshua to take the people into the promised land. But Joshua, even though he knew God, he knew the presence of God, he would stay in the presence of God in the tabernacle. Even after Moses would leave, you know, after talking to God, Joshua would just stay there enjoying the presence of God. Many years serving Moses. And then Joshua, there was a big city called Jericho. In order for Joshua, which is known that he was a great general and he had many great victories, and they even studied his uh, tactics, military tactics, uh, to see how also they could have victories in, in how he did it. Well, one of the things that Joshua did, he loved Jesus. Well, he didn't know Jesus then because Jesus was in the New Testament, but he loved God. Okay? He loved God and he had a relationship with God. Okay? And then Joshua how to go against Jericho and take down that big city that was undestroyable, impossible. It was an impossible situation in the natural 
way of speaking. See, sometimes naturally there's situations that you'll say it's impossible. Scientifically, they'll say the situations that it's impossible and they'll prove it with science. And that's good that they provide proof with science. But there's something that's above science. The creator of science. The creator of everything in heaven and earth. So when man says it's impossible, that's where God <coughs> says, really? <coughs> impossible? <laughs> Not for me. Let me show you what I could do. So God sends him the prince... Let me read chapter 5 before I, I, I misquote. Chapter 5, they're, they're celebrating Passover before going to Jericho. In chapter 5, verse 10, it says, The children of Israel camped around Gilgal, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at twilight of the plains of Jericho. Now remember, that was on the, the Passover is kept on the first month of the year. And the first month of the year is not January for biblically speaking. The first month of the year, biblically speaking, is the month of April, where the Passover takes place, where, where the resurrection of Jesus Christ took place. So Joshua celebrates the Passover. Then shortly thereafter, in, the, in verse 14, in verse 13, uh, uh, it says, It came to pass Joshua was by Jericho. He looked up, and there was a man stood opposite him, uh, stood opposite him with a sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us or are you against us? So he said, "I No, but I am the commander of the army of the Lord. I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? The commander of the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals, uh, the sandals of your foot, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Oh, my God. Now, this man here is with a capital M in your Bible. This man is the angel of the Lord himself. Okay? It's the God himself. The commander is the Christ, is the commander of the army of the Lord. He is the Christ. And so God himself, that's why Joshua fell and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord uh, say to his servant and notice that this angel did not say do not worship me for we are men that is in the New Testament That's in the New Testament this particular angel allowed the worship because it was God himself in the body of a man a warrior man an angel and This angel God himself gave Joshua the ability to understand and carry out instructions to defeat the greatest city in the entire planet which was Jericho so after that, they just, that's where they marched around six times. And on the seventh time, they shouted, hallelujah, hallelujah, we're a loud shout. They started shouting. It didn't make sense, naturally. How are you going to take down these big, big walls and, and this tremendous, powerful city of Jericho singing and shouting and blowing trumpets? What, are you out of your mind? Well, yes. If God tells us to do something and it doesn't make any sense, I will be out of my natural mind and go into a divine mind, a supernatural mind. I have to get out of my mind to get the breakthrough victory. I have to get out of my religious activity to get the breakthrough victory. I'm tired of religion that has no, no passion for God. I'm talking about passion for God that you come out of your mind and you say, I'm going to do what God says. If he tells me to jump, I'm going to jump. If he tells me to walk backwards, I'm going to walk backwards. If he tells me to spin around, I'm going to spin around. I don't care what the somebody's tell me that I'm doing, that I'm crazy and acting childish. I don't care what people tell, uh, make fun of me. I just simply care that I, what I'm doing is obedience to, to God. And yes, Sometimes we got to come out of our mindset. We need our mind to be renovated. You want the breakthrough? You have to do something different. You want the breakthrough? You have to take a step of faith. You want a breakthrough? You're going to have to even make change locations. You have a breakthrough? You're going to have to get rid of some friends that are dead and negative. You might, they might go to the same church, but they don't love Jesus. They're just there to criticize the preacher, criticize the pastor, criticize everybody else, but they don't see the spoke in their own eye. You want a breakthrough? You're to have to make some new friends and get rid of some old friends. You want a breakthrough? You're going to have to do things differently. You're going to have to worship differently. You have to gonna have to make a new mindset. A new mindset. A new mindset. A new mindset. See, Jesus worked. You know, Jesus welcomed everybody. 
Jesus welcomed the fishermen. He, were, he welcomed the accountants. He walked, uh, welcomed everyone. Different walks of life. They looked different. They acted different. But you know what? They were around Jesus. And, and the reason they got the breakthrough is that they, they didn't see the faults in each other. They saw Jesus' disciples in each other. They saw Jesus was the leader. And if we're in Jesus' team, obviously there must be something about somebody else that Jesus loves. There must be something of that person in your church that Jesus loves. That's why they go to church. But we don't, we don't, we don't have a mind of criticism, a critical mind. He should, the preacher should do this. The pastor should do that. They should do this. They should sing this song. That song was too loud. That song was too long. That song, they should give me earplugs. No, I don't want earplugs. Oh, they, you know, you, hey, hey, shalabaso. We need a new mind. We need a new mindset. They walked around these walls. Six times like foolish people, not even talking. They were chatting. There was no talking aloud. They were simply following the instructions of the Lord. And I could imagine people, I could imagine those false prophets or those prophets that think they heard God speaking. That probably told them, how, I don't know, you know, I was in prayer and the Lord came to me. You know how false prophets are. They sound good. They dress right. They even know the terminology, how to speak. And, and they, 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 they might have said, you know, uh, Joshua, Joshua, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I heard the Lord say, uh, don't, don't, don't march around Jericho seven times. Just, 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 I think he told me to tell you just march around one time. You know, false prophets will always come against when God told you to do something. You don't need to go to somebody else and ask them, what do you think about this word of God? And you know that God spoke to you. You do what God tells you to do. Because, because there's people that won't understand. But they will say, well, I, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Jericho, uh, some of your people may not have the motive in their hearts they're just out there for the money you know you know you all those false prophets they have to get under my feet you know in the old testament we used to use sandals as as a, we used to use sandals and and this is how we made a covenant and we're covenanted with god we're covenanted with the word of god if god tells you to do something those false prophets will smack them down in the name of jesus not physically but smack down those words because words have power don't let a false prophet tell you something when you know god has shown you something thank you Jesus they walked around Jericho the seventh time they simply shouted praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah glory we honor you Jesus or whatever they shouted suddenly there was an earthquake suddenly out of nowhere there was a heavy earthquake the walls of the most powerful city in the world came crumbling down. God gave his people total victory because of a divine intervention, a divine direction. My God, demons fall at the presence of the Messiah, Jesus. I want to give you one last, one last scripture, Genesis 28. Because God is good. God is good. And I'm telling you, we're entering, we're entering, we're entering, we are entering a new year in September. Biblically new year. One of the cycles of the new year. It's not only the first month of, uh, for holy things. The, the, first, the first cycle starts in April. But then in September, you have the, the, the infrastructure new year, the, the year where businesses start, where school systems start. Even, even over here uh, in the stock market, it's a, new, it's a new year in the month of um, September. Let's see what happens in Genesis 28, verses 12 through 15. Here is Jacob. Jacob had a dream, verse 12, 28, 12, and a ladder was set up on the earth and, it, and its top reached the heaven. There, and there the angels of God were going up and down the ladder and, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land of, on which you lie, I will give to you and to your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I am, I am with you and shall keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you nor forsake you. And then Jacob, when he had this vision, when he had this revelation in verse 17, he says, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. 
and this is the gate of heaven. Now, Jacob had this revelation. God sent a revelation of angels going up, angels going down, angels going up, angels going down, right? Could it be that when he saw angels going up and the Lord stood on top, you know, around the Lord's throne, there's many colors. There's many colors around his throne, according to Revelation 4 and 5. There's very many colors. And then, could it be that because he remembered this experience, that he remembered this dream, this encounter with the angels and with the Lord standing on top, that when he gave Joseph his son, his favorite son, when he made him a coat, it was a coat of many colors? To remember the promise of God as he saw the angels ascend, descend, ascend, descend. And he stood up and he saw the Lord standing up at the entrance into heaven. See, God is about to do something he has never done before. He did it for Jacob. Jacob needed the revelation. He did it. He did it for Joshua. Joshua needed a further revelation. And he did it for Cornelius. Now, if God did it for this people, these people in the Bible, if God did, did it for these people in the Bible, why won't he do it for you? Of course he wants to do it for you. Is that, that the only reason there's only a limited amount of people that we could read about or else we would be holding a library full of books. We would have too many books to read. These are basically two or three witnesses, Cornelius, Joshua, Jacob, out of the mouth of every two or three witnesses, let every word of God be established. God wants to give you that experience, that revelation, that you may enter a jubilee season, a jubilee season like none other. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. Let's give Jesus a little, little, a little hand. Amen. God is good. God is good. Now, the first thing to have this revelation, of course, is to have Jesus in your heart. The greatest revelation any human being can have, the greatest is to say, you know what? I repent. I'm a sinner. I've been wrong. I mean, I repent. I mean, Apostle Paul, before he was Paul, he was Saul. He had to repent. He had to repent and because God gave him a revelation. So I'm asking you today, if you are here watching this, uh, this broadcast, or the, this, this right now, if you're being touched by the power of the Holy Ghost, and you say, you know what, it is my day, it is my hour. I cannot go another day like this. I cannot enter another month with this same struggle. Just close your eyes, bow your head. Some of you have to bow, get on your knees. Get on your knees and bow before Jesus. Because this is, this is, And just say it with me. Whether you're new in the Lord or you're about to receive Christ, just say with me, oh Lord, come into my heart. Give me a revelation that comes from you. I repent of every sin, known or unknown. I renounce everything that has offended you, my God. I pray, God, for your mercy and your compassion upon my life. I pray, O oh God, for the salvation of souls. I pray for my family. And as you're saying these things, I pray that the Holy Ghost touches you. And just ask Him, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me by your blood. Heal me by your power. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Praise God. I want to finish off by saying, you know, Fuego Ministries, we, do a, we try to do a crusade recently in the last few years, every year. And we have a crusade coming up in November on November 4th through the 10th, 2020, in Pakistan. We have a team, developing a team, and I'm asking, I'm asking anyone that's out there that if you feel a call to the nations and you wanna to come to Pakistan with us, please just uh, write us an email on, or on the comment section and we'll get information, uh, we'll get back to you with some information. We would love to have you come with us. We're expecting 15,000 people a total, that's 5,000 people each night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, in an outside open field. And during the daytime, we will be doing ministry, pastors' conferences, uh, visiting villages. We will all be able to do ministry, preaching at villages, preaching for the people, street ministry, etc. We just want to bring the love of Christ, the love of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to a Muslim world, to say God loves you and God blesses you. God wants to bless you. 
If you want to be part of this, just contact us. It will be, it will be a tremendous blessing to have you with us. I pray that you, uh, you pray about this because this is exciting what God is doing right now. And remember, wherever we go in life, we are surrounded by, a, by angels to fulfill God's purpose. Well, we thank you for being part of Fuego Ministries. Until next time, God richly bless you. <laughs>